Well people, I'm down here at Watch It. <laughs> I've had a pretty disastrous week, followed by more disastrous days, disastrous hours, disastrous minutes. I suppose we go and tow fishing with Tomo down here out of Watch It Marina. And it's just this northerly wind will not, I think it's northwesterly, will not lay down. So I'm waiting Tomo who's going to let me possibly sleep on the boat tonight because he wants a six o'clock shout and it is absolutely churned up the water, loads and loads of weed in it. About high water, so because I'm down at high water I don't want to waste that time. So you can see the marina over on the inside of me. Obviously there's nobody out, there's one yacht out there trying to come in. He's pulled his sail now, he's, he's, he's coming in over there. He's coming out under engine power, too risky with the sail trying to get in here. But listen, I'm down the pier, I've got an hour before Tomo turns up in the evening. Over high water, I'm just throwing out a head of a bluey, and I think it was a tail of a bluey, I can't even remember. But it's bluey, which is very old, been using it catfishing. So I'm having a bit of a bit of a, a mareish week, as we all do. You all know what it's like. But you know, from the minute I opened my eyes this morning, I knew it was going to be a bad day. When everything goes wrong. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you then worse. I get halfway down on a two and a half hour drive. All my food for tonight, tomorrow, out in the boat, if we ever get in the boat tomorrow. I left at home. Wifey phoned me. She's not happy after making all the sandwiches. So Lord alone knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I've got to get through tonight. But I have thrown a bait out. I might get lucky with a dogfish. I don't mind a bit of pier fishing, but it is, as you can see, brown, horrible, windy, white caps, weed, even got weed blown, lying on my rods here. But at least I've got a bait in the water, it's something in there, guys. It's something, it's something. One fish would salvage it. I have one hour. I'm so rushed, I haven't even bothered to put my uh, beach rest up. Tricky old bit of steerage trying to get into the marina. Can only get in here and out of here at high water. The best of luck to him. Well, well Tom, Tom has walked up and I'm going to pop up here. And he saw the bite. It's terrible, isn't it? He's, he's just seen the bite. I'm sure there's something there. There's definitely a kick. And you look like you might have the other line, but it's not to worry. Here he goes. There's definitely something there. You get him, Tomo. Anything with fins? I don't know what it is. It's on quite a decent piece of blue. It might just be a dogfish or something like that. Ah, oh, there we go. We're going to see a fish at the last moment. Um, even better, Tomo tells me the wind's going to go down tomorrow. Hopefully. Here he comes. Hang on a second. Come this side. If he comes off, he comes off. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, Tomo. Oh, it's there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There's life out there yet. It sort of saved see. the blank for me, Tomo. It's all, <laughs> you know, we were talking, I didn't see the bite at all. But it just goes short on the pier. There's always a chance. So there we go. Only a strap eel, boys, but it goes back in the water. There he goes. Save the blank. Well, hung off a blank. Well, people, how lucky was that? Tomo came down just to uh, check on his boat and, and uh, see things in general. Comes down, we were talking away like that, standing talking like this. I guess he does fishing so much. He, he's talking to me, but he's looking like this all the time. He said, I think you got a bite on that rod, Graham. And indeed, when I wound down, I could see the slack line coming back. It was, a, a, you know, a, a bite. I gave the rod, I said, Tomo, I started winding to give it to Tomo because I've got to do the camera. So I'm hoping that footage came out. Look, it's only a little conger eel, it's a little baby eel, but it's something. Can't really count, can I not count it as mine? You guys won't tell, will you? Save the blank, save the blank, people. And down there, the other guys came out, they recognised me from the, uh, from the show, I think it was, and one of them was using Peter Crabby's had an eight pound smooth hound way before I got here. Eight pound smooth hound, and a guy, I think on the end, had a small conger as well. So there's always a chance here, but Tommy did say to hang on. So that's what I'm going to do and grab a bite to eat in there in a pub later on. So actually I'm going to get a bit more, well, hopefully an hour and a half more fishing here before the tide goes. The problem being here at Watch It is this is land when it goes out. All out here is just land. It's gone off the face of the planet. When it goes, it goes. So at the moment, the weed has been, just so you guys know, Tom was telling me, when it ebbs, it hits the end of the pier and the tide is very strong. The wind wants to push it in, but it pushes that weed line that I had trouble with earlier 
further out over there. So it, hopefully, look, it's still going to go in the line, I know, but hopefully I won't get so many false bites. I can see it in the line there now. It's actually on the line, but not vast clumps of it. So he tells me the wind is going down tomorrow will be easterly to northeasterly and yes he reckons we will get to the taupe grounds we'll find out because you know we're sleeping i'm not sleeping on a campsite i'm not sleeping in my car which i normally do i'm going to be sleeping on tomo's boat in the marina i'll show you guys later on uh, well the last two charter boats that we've seen out there uh, tomo said came from watch it uh, they're going to be coming in in a minute I don't think they've got much time to get in. A call to Tommy said so they have to be pretty sharpish, otherwise they won't get in, it'll dry out. You then see the narrow channel these guys have got to get into to actually physically get inside the marina. There you can see, that's one of the watch it charter boats. Man after my own heart, he's got plenty of rods on there. He's going around in a big white curve because he's got to get through that tiny gap over there into the marina, safety of the marina. Nice big boat. And the other one's coming just around here, Scooby-Doo. There's a film up, we've got a film up on that one. Watch Steve Yendel uh, doing a cob one. And it's a nice big boat as well. Might even be Steve driving it, I don't know. I have to say the sun's sparkling on the water now with Tomo's forecast and that eel, I feel a bit better. Well, I'm just waiting for that one last bite. The guys told me it's, uh, it's about another half an hour of tide that you can fish here. But i tell you what's interesting. What they're doing is they're putting drop nets on the inside of the pier here, just, just down where they are. It looks like he's on a fish. I think it might be, actually. I think he might have a fish there. I'll go and have a look at that one. And uh, they're catching crabs down here, but they're also getting prawns. And that last little strap here we had was with a prawn. It's nice when you get the light like this and the weather comes good. Hopefully it's gonna come good. I really didn't have great hopes to start with. You can see I'm walking along the pier here. Up there you've got all the old cottages and that. A thousand years old this port is. Can you believe that? A thousand years they've been people ferrying stuff in here. Obviously this is modern but it's a very, very old port area. Oh, 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 is that right hand one got a bit of a pull on it? Could be weed, they're getting weed there now, so that might be what I'm getting as well. But yeah, I can see tons of weed in the water. Might get one more cast out of this. Just looking at this under here, it's been chewed and crabbed, but half the bluey, so the crabs are feeding, and if the crabs are feeding, I always think something else could. Let's get the other one in. Call it quits. Now that's the uh, underneath the weed. You can see there a little half a bluey section whipped on there. Nice size. You get a small fish or a big fish on that. Uh, crabs are just eating there. So let's get back on the boat. I think up the pub, something to eat. Crabs are eating well anyway. And then look forward to tomorrow. Well, I'm here. I bought. Uh, the boat for the morning. Tomo's off home. I've got to sleep in here. There is a sort of a bunk there. I could stretch out, hopefully get a few hours of sleep there. And uh, yeah, I think he's coming 5.15 in the morning, but you can see here, look at the huge amount of mud that's in this marina. It's just silt in suspension. That is, as the tides come in, it's just settled and sunk and built up higher and higher and higher. I wonder if there's, if there's like thousands of years where they'd be up level there and there'd be no boats, they'd be higher than the houses. Apparently there are plans afoot to dredge it, but you can see it's a monstrous amount of mud. But hopefully in the morning, we're gonna be floating here and then we can get out. One thing I did bring with me, which will make life much easier for the next hour, is a bottle of liquid gold. At least I won't be thirsty through the night. A few hours sleep, we'll see you guys in the morning. And I hope this, I can't see this wind going down, but you never know, Tom, I said it's going to go down. Fingers crossed, guys. Get myself sorted out. I hope you get a few hours sleep.
Well, here we were, and there are one hope shoals and mackerel marking on the sounder. So, look how close to shore we are, and from leaving at Watch It, further down the coast, the water is much cleaner. So, I did what all good cameramen should do let the other lads work away trying to catch some mackerel while I hid in the sanctuary of the cabin. That's where we are, close in there, see the boat? Very, very, very tight to those cliffs there. And you can see in the background they go, I don't know, 500, 600 feet. They're very, very big cliffs. Um, we've got to use quite heavy traces. Obviously, Tope have got uh, big teeth. Um, this uh, is actually a 300 pound breaking strain um, mono. Um, I, I sent a um, few people recently. I don't don't be you know intimidated by thinking, oh, 300 pound mono. That's going to be uh, you know hard to use. The the, the sort of modern game and um, big game. Um, monos are, are so good and so soft. Um, you know, there used to be a, a, a time where I'd make my traces up the night before, um, you know, sort of hang a weight off them so that the next morning they're fairly straight and kink free. But you know, as you can see, this has been coiled up in my box um, for a couple of days, and you know, it's soft and supple and it's, it's easy to use. I also um, I crimp my mono. Um, I know a few people are a little bit. Um, scared of crimps, worried they might slip, um, but but they don't. All, all you've got to do when you've got crimps is just make sure that you're you're matching the size of crimp correctly to the the mono or or wire that you might be using. Um, and then uh, you know if you want to, and I have done it, you, you can double crimp it, put an, put another crimp on, and you know just a bit of peace of mind, and, and, and that's not going anywhere. And hook sizes. Yeah, hook sizes. Me. This is a tenno, um, nice strong um, tenno hook. Um, you can use a little bit bigger as well. We don't tend to use smaller hooks. I mean, you'd, you'd hook tope on, um, you know, 5.0s, 6.0s, 8.0s, um, you know, just just fine. But the issue we've got here is we've got a lot of bull husk, a lot of dogfish. Um, so as you'll see in a little bit when I um, bait up my hook, we'll try and use a, a slightly bigger hook. We'll try and make sure that this hook point is stood very proud and just away from the, the bait. Really just an effort to fend off some of the smaller fish or nuisance fish that... Um, you know, on another day, it might be quite nice to catch, but today it's not our not our target. Um, you see, James there, he's um, he's just doing exactly that now. He's just wrapping up a, a whole mackerel. Um, all we tend to do is snip off the, the tail um, and then uh, thread the hook through the through the mouth. Um, is that just stop it spinning in the tide, the tail, yeah, or just a little bit of juice out, or both? A bit, a, a bit of both, really. Um, and you see, James might do it now as well, and then just give a little bit of a a few pricks on the, the tail end of the mackerel as well. And again, just to just to let a bit more, yeah, just let a few more, a bit more ju juices out, um, and that's the that's the way we do it. We, our, our, our trouble here is is as I say that the, the what would be perceived as the nuisance fish, the the bull husk, the dogfish, and if we were to use flappers here, um, we'll drop our baits down, and within seconds we'll have a husk or a dogfish uh, on, on the end of it. Now we're still going to get pass and dogfish through the day it's almost unavoidable and you'll get taps and knocks on your rod all day but just these larger baits just seem to fend off those fish long enough to to hopefully get the tote come along and um yeah snaffle it up and, and tear off with your bait um so we um if, if we don't have any fresh mackerel we're quite happy to use um the frozen mackerel i get on my mackerel from ammo and it's fantastic quality um and then the way we we prepare it is i'm going to cut the tail off um, for two reasons. One, that's just going to um, stop it spinning in the tide. Also, it's going to let a bit of a bit of scent out at the end. And then that's it. Now I'm going to get this on the hook. What I do, actually, is I just run a little slit 
just down the the back of the macro here which I'm actually going to use to kind of sit the hook in um, first of all I'm going to thread it I'm just going to go through the bottom lip I'm going to pull the pull the trace right through and then what I do just find that little notch I've made, that little slit I'm going to thread the hook in like this Okay, now in a moment I'll elasticate that up. Let's get this out of the pot. And we use quite a lot of elastic. And the the reason I'm doing this it is just to fend off the the bullhus, the dogfish that we have in big numbers here. Um, I've got my hook. You see here I've actually got my hook point, it's set uh, about midpoint of the mackerel. Um, if I was going you know, bass fishing or whatever, my hook point would be nearer to the end of the, the mackerel. But, but this, is, as I say, this, this is just an effort to fend off the, the bull huss, and we've, we found that this is, this is the most effective way. Um, bull huss are generally quite shy biters. They'll come along, they'll have a good chomp on this, but they won't quite reach up, or not as often reach up to where this hook point is. Whereas a tope um, will just come along and uh, snaffle that and, and hammer it. I do make sure I get plenty of um, elastic just around the, the sort of nose of the mackerel here. Again, it's just an effort to stop it spinning in the tide. Give it a little bit of a poke as well. Again, it's all just to help a few more juices flow out. And that's it, there's our tote bait ready to go. There we go, guys, first fish on. I want to say five minutes, but I think that'd be lying. I think it was less than five minutes. He's all right, James. We get long tote. So, whoa. First tope A ball. So Tomo, this is about average size one for here? Yeah, I think this is, this is a bit smaller than average. Um, yeah. we, we do well for the size of the tope. Not the numbers, but the size of the tope. Um, I'd like to think this will be one of the smaller ones we'll, we'll see in the day. Um, this must be around, what do you think, James? 20 pounds? It 20, feels 20, about 20, that, doesn't it? 20, 23, 24. Yeah. Um, but I, Not a big one, yeah, but. we get we get plenty in the sort of thirty pound bracket, and then um, you know we do make a jump from time to time and go into the forties, and there's, there's a bigger tote than that here as well. But yeah, so, good, first, start. good start, good <laughs> start, first cast, first two minutes, drop. first drop, job done. Right, put a back, fight another day. Well, looks like we got a double header here, guys. Zorro. <laughs> we got we got one on here, we got one up here. and the other rods had a pull on it as well. He's, He's on double header. You need more <laughs> hands, mate. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mud work, bro. <laughs> yeah. You need more hands. <laughs> we'll get in there. Hang on. So two tape on at the same time here, people. I'll go back in the cabin so you can see it from this angle more. Oh, we've been here 20 minutes. Had that first fish, and then two, and they can come in packs as well, little bunches of fish. So hopefully these two are going to stay apart. Don't cross lines. Fingers crossed, as they say. Not lines crossed. Probably won't notice you get the other one in closer, I guess. See where, which way the uh, lines go. I can't, I can't feel the other line on that. But they're not very close. We're about to get the lines sorted out between. Get them crossed up. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh dear. Oh dear. 
Wat is dit allemaal heen? Dat is definitely a bang on that, so I'm going to put this on my camera. Just on my head for a second, because we don't need to cross up. See this Graham? Slightly bigger, I think, this it's one. It's a bit bigger, is he, yeah? Yeah. Not a monster, but... He's gone again. He's off again. Where's yours there, Tomo? Looks like a dozy doe. I can't film two. <laughs> no, I might come to this one. Double trouble. Here we go, double arm full of tote boys. Tomo certainly puts the people on the mark. We well, tell you he puts he puts you on the mark. Put right? me on the mark, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just holding your fish. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's two two on the uh, two on the mackerel. So it's mackerel all the way. Brilliant. Go on that one. Whoa, he's zooming. That goes the other fish. They went away, straight away. Tom's got a little bit of an investigation going on here. I think they'll have two or three goes at it sometimes, Tomo. Yeah, they can do. They uh, some days they'll just tear off, and other days a little bit like this. It's, it's it's obviously picked it up, and it's just moving very, very slowly. I'm just looking for that moment where you have a little bit more confidence to try and set the hook. Which hey, he's going a bit faster now. I'll just tighten up the drag and just wind and hope he's there. There we he go. Is. Yeah. So you're on what line? Just run through your gear while you're fighting so this fish, Tom. The gear I've got, the rods are is actually eight foot, eight foot six. Um, it's rated ten to twenty pound, but it's it's a lot beefier than that. You can cast a ten ounce lead with it. Um, it's got a very soft tip, and then it, the the strength is down in the butt. So um, this has actually become my my rod of choice. We do a lot of up tiding, and it it works so well for that. It clearly works well for down tiding here. Um, and then main line, uh, I'm using thirty pound. Um, breaking strain mono um, and that runs through down to um, our our trace which is a 300 pound nylon about seven foot trace I've got um, onto a tenno uh, I'm using J hooks today you can use circles uh, it's a little bit sort of each to your own really um, again with the, the traces you can use wire traces if you want but then you know you, you don't have to go a full sort of seven foot of wire you could have Six rubbing foot, leader, yeah, a short six, piece of rubbing leader or something. And the, you, you can fish with a shorter trace and then actually connect that to a rubbing leader, but um, it does seem to be that you know, six, seven foot, eight foot even trace, that's going to do your job as a rubbing leader as well. It's, it's unlikely you're going to get a taupe wrap around rap the line rap numerous, like that yeah, far, yeah. numerous times. And if, if you do, oh, bad luck, but you know, I've yeah. never had it happen, so yeah. try and keep it nice and simple. One of the days oh. no, no. You don't want any of it yet. Camera shot this one, Graham. Yeah, he is in there. That's a better one. They're all good fish, eh? We pop this on the scales in a minute, um, but this is uh, this is going to be a, a thirty. Yeah, I would say it's a low thirty. 
Um, yeah, so a, a lovely fish to catch. So we've tagged this one, people. Look, there's the tag. It's got the nail on it. There's a cylinder of information in there. It's got a code number on it. And the recapture people, uh, I think they get five or ten dollars for a recapture, just to make them send it back. And that tells you well, this, you know, where it's travelled to. And we're just going to measure this one. This one was a uh, female, wasn't it, Tomo? Yeah, female this one is. So you can do a fork length and overall. We just do an overall length, and that one. Oh, so fork. Fork is uh, 48 inches. So it's 48 and 54. Oh, 54. Uh, 48 and 54 here. and a bite. Let's get that one back. There you can see that just unscrews and it's got several languages inside because um, a lot of these obviously are called by long liners. But I've had them off the north coast of Spain, tagged just down the coast, North Devon as well. So I'm pretty sure this one's going to be good for recapture. So here we go. See these predators travel all over. And I think a lot of these end up in the Canary Islands, they get big distances, but you never know where do they go to, do they come back. Tomo, you're going to find out with that one. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what happens here. Where it goes. Well, how about this, folks? It is a massive landslide. I'm on full zoom, so the camera's a little bit shaky. I can't help that. But I was looking at something and I thought, why is that smoke going down the hill? And then about a minute, two minutes later, I saw something the size of three hotels rolling down the cliff. And as you can see there in the distance, about 400 feet of cliff has collapsed into the sea. We didn't get any tsunami off it, but you can see how far away I was and exactly how big that landfall was. Wow. That was like a shark, That's wasn't awesome. it? Yeah. That, that's one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, in case guys want to know what happened, Tomo's fighting a tope, and we're winding the other line in, and they said a second oh. tope came up, racing around on the surface, trying to grab the bait, and, that, and you actually saw it take it, yeah? Yeah, yeah he it stayed there. Right up, I left up the surface, and they come up and took it. Oh, uh, this other line, Tomo, move this one. No, my brave one, or you inside that. He was wanting that, wasn't he, that tope, smell. So again, double hook up. Either side of the boat, which is handy. That's a tagger boy, look at it. And there's the other fish. I've never seen that before, I must admit. I've never, I've never seen that on the surface like that. And the speed it was going around. Yeah, looking, looking for the bait, trying to home yeah. in. Well, you wouldn't want to be a small fish down there, would you? Because he's going to—he's he's going to catch you. He's going to catch you. There we go. The sleek form of a tope. Hopefully, we get a. So tags in this one, people. Just doing the measurement. 49 inches. 49, that'll do us overall. That's a female. Whoop. We'll get that one straight back then, Tomo. Yeah. That is gonna be 51 inches to the tail. Yeah. yeah. And female again, yeah. Watch your grip, Red. So 
So there's the tag, people. So, and there's the number. Shouldn't be able to read it. So is it 389115? You unscrew this, take it out, read the label, and send it back to us. Up to here, that's a... 40, 49 and a half. That's pretty much the same as the other one, yeah? Yeah. Good show. 49 and a half a female. Yeah, maybe it is a tote. So you see guys, uh, Tommy puts a towel over, it keeps them quiet there. It's going to be very windy in the mic in a minute because it's turning into the wind that direction. And I've got this down as a bullus, but maybe it's not. So we coming up to sort of dead. Oh. oh, he's a bullus. Oh, he's got lovely markings on him, yeah. yeah. That's him. Come to the right. See the colour markings on that one, lovely markings on it. Let's get it back. The biggest, the, the smallest fish on the biggest bait, guys. <laughs> that dogfish said never give up. It's not often you get that, people. Look, a dogfish is about twice as big as the mackerel bait we're using. So downwind, whole bait, big grip lead there, homemade, rubber band holding it on, and I'll send it down the back, out the way. This rod's a bit different, this one has an extendable butt that you can pull out like this for casting with, and then if you're fighting the fish or you want to put it in the holder, it's a lot shorter down there, but it's just handy for casting. It comes with two tips, I don't even get them now. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, yet another tote with a tag in. Um, oh, I reckon that's 512s, it's 5 feet and 61, isn't it? Is, uh... Well, you can feed his nose up here. Put him, put him, get him dead straight, so that's a good one to get. Yeah, there's his nose. More than that, 60 something, just put his tail down. Alright? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 61. 61, yeah. 5 feet one, yeah. Got a good tag one on that as well. I'm going to say these might be the first Watch It tag tope. <laughs> from watch it and there guys you can see the nictating membrane which you would normally they close like that you can see it just gentle tap that's a nice one Tom I better weigh that one in the net it goes I'm going to call that 42, 44. I reckon that's up there. Yeah. It's got to be around the 40. 42. 42, I'm on yeah. 44. I definitely think it's a 40. Right. 40 pounds, 11 ounces for those guys who want to know. So that is fish of the day. In that tide as well, a good scrap. Well, with that big tote going back in the water, what was ever going to come next on the rods? What? I mean, what? A big bass on a tote bait? 
So that's about the size you get out there, would it be when you say that you go outside fishing for the bass, right? Yeah, about the average size. Yeah, about the average size, yeah. So nice bonus fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice bonus fish. Just about to pack up, guys. And James is hooked up again. Nice big fish this time. So fingers crossed, it might be up around the, the magic 40 pounds, who knows. It's a good one, yeah? Yeah, that's a good one. The monster awakens. <laughs> when you grab that tail, it might kick off. We've got the tag in there as well. Right. Hopefully he's burned with his energy yeah, and he's filled up with... Didn't put her in my lap either, so I'm sitting there. He's filled up with lactic, lactic acid and quietened down. Ready? Is he unveiling? Go back there and turn around a bit. Ta-da! Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good one, yeah. Strong, isn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure I can help you. Right, hang on. Me. You've got him or he's got you, one <laughs> or the other. Just let me cuddle it a minute. Yeah. You, yeah. you too can own a t-shirt like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely big tote, that one. It's over 40. Only 40. Yeah, 43, 43. something, yeah. yeah 43. Fish of the day. 43 something. Four to forty-three, two forties in a day can't be bad, can it? Tom, if you hold the back, that's it. Get both of you in a picture. That's good. That's good. That's good. See if we got the right one. Watch his teeth on the mesh when you yeah. put it. You just need his nose out the mesh or hers. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. 